All right, guys, today we're going to be transforming quadratic equations. A transformation is a change made to a function or relation such that its graph is shifted or changed in shape. The vertex form of a quadratic equation is y equals a times x minus h all squared plus k. So this is vertex form because this part of the equation, that negative h and k, give us the vertex hk. So if it's negative h, that means that we have a positive h value, and positive k means we have a positive k value. If we have plus h and minus k, that means we have negative h and negative k as our vertex. So again, whenever you have an equation in vertex form, you can find the vertex, and you can also see how the function y equals x squared has been transformed y equals a times x minus h squared plus k. So here's our equation again. Dilating a quadratic function affects the a in the equation above. Reflecting a quadratic function affects the sign of the a in the equation above. So we're going to graph some of these equations. We're going to start with y equals x squared. So if we graph y equals x squared, whoops, clear, clear and then pull up the table. We can see all the values we need to graph, and we can graph up to 9 on this coordinate plane. So we're going to do negative 3, 9, which is here, and then negative 2, 4, negative 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 4, and 3, 9. So we have this quadratic function, which is what we call the parent function, because it is just y equals x squared. Okay, so now if I graph y equals 3x squared on that same axis, I'm going to change it in my table, pull up the table. Now I see that at negative 3, I'm at 27, and at negative 2, I'm at 12. So I'm just going to only graph the negative 2. So negative 2 of 12 is here. So it went all the way down from 4 up to 12. And then negative 1 goes to 3. 0 stays at 0, and then the opposite on the other side. So we have this new, much narrower quadratic function for y equals 3x squared. So what do we notice here? The function is narrowed. Okay, so everything is pushed in. It becomes a much skinnier function. It's also being pulled up, so you can think of it as being stretched. Okay, so narrowed and stretched. Okay, and that would be by a factor of 3. Because if you look at the coordinates, that 1, 1 we originally had, that negative 1, 1 or positive 1, 1 right here, became 1, 3. Okay? And the 2, 4 that we originally had became 2, 12. Okay? So they both stretched by a factor of 3. I think I originally had those at 2. They should be at 3. All right. So again, when you have a value out front of with a that is a whole number, it's being narrowed and stretched. So you're going to graph that y equals 1 half x squared on your own. I'm going to skip that for right now and go to y equals negative x squared. So for negative x squared, and clear what's here, we have negative x all squared, pull up the table, and now we have all negative values in our y. So if I go to graph this, I have negative 3, negative 9. which is here, and then negative 2, negative 4, negative 1, negative 1, 0, 0, and then the opposite on the other side. Looks like this. And that's negative x squared. So now if we compare the points from the original x squared to that, okay, we have 1, 1, 1, 1, 
it's on the opposite side of the x-axis, then 4 down to negative 4 on the opposite side of the x-axis, and 9 down to negative 9 is on the opposite side of the x-axis. So what that has done is reflected x squared over the x-axis. So we're going to make note of that as well. So we can write negative x squared is a reflection of x squared over the x-axis. So you can pause here and go back and try that y equals 1 half x squared on your own. Make sure you write a description as to how that affects the original or parent function of y equals x squared. Okay, so now we're using that same function and we have translating. Translating a quadratic function affects the h for horizontal and k for vertical of the above function. So it's going to shift it horizontally or vertically depending on what that h value or k value is. So again, we want to graph the original x squared function so we can use it to compare. So again, remember that's 1, 1 because 1 squared is 1, 2, 4 because 2 squared is 4, and 3, 9 because 3 squared is 9. And then the same on the opposite side with 0, 0 being one of the points because 0 squared is 0. So again, this is what we call our parent function, y equals x squared. And we're going to do the two different functions as well. I'm going to do one, and then you're going to do the other. So I'm going to do the y equals x minus 5 all squared with you. We'll put that in the calculator. So we have parentheses, x minus 5 all squared. And we pull up the table. Whoops. I have that double exponent there, delete that, delete that, delete that, and put an exponent there. Ah, it's still not working. There we go, now it should work. Pull up the table. So now I have 2, 9, 3, 4, 4, 1, 5, 0, 6, 1, and 7, 4, and 8, 9. So I'm going to graph those ones. So 2, 9 is right 2 up 9. 3, 4 is right 3 up 4. Four one is right four up one, five zero, six one, seven three, or seven four rather, and eight nine. So now we have this function here, which looks like it's exactly the same shape as our parent function. But it is all shifted over. Okay, and if you notice, each point is shifted exactly one, two, three, four, five units to the right. You do the same thing here. One, two, three, four, five units to the right. One, two, three, four, uh oh. Five, six units to the right. Did I graph something wrong there? Hmm, now I need to start over. Oh, I see what I did. I was counting to the wrong one. So starting at purple, silly keyser. One, two, three, four, five units to the right. Okay, so all the points are shifted five to the right. Okay, as we can see in the actual equation, this x minus five means we're doing a translation five units to the right. So y equals x minus 5 all squared shifts or translates x squared 5 units right. Okay, so again, you're going to try the next one, that x plus 3 all squared, on your own, and again, write a description as to how it affects the original x squared function. Okay, then third, we have a little bit more. Now we have the x squared plus 5 and x squared minus 3. So there's no parentheses here. This is affecting the k value. So it should also be some kind of translation. I'll do the first two with you. You're going to try the third on your own and describe as well. 
So again, that y equals x squared should be easy to graph. 0 squared is 0, 1 squared is 1, negative 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, negative 2 squared is 4, and 3 squared is 9, and negative 3 squared is also 9. So once again, that's what we call our parent function. And if we pull up the table for y equals x squared plus 5, we want to look for the vertex. And we see the vertex is at 0, 5, so we'll build around that point. So 0, 5 is 2, 4, 5 starting here. And then negative 1, 6 and 1, 6. And negative 2, 9 and 2, 9. And then 3, 14 and negative 3, 14. I think it's all the way up at the top. Like that. So again, the shape of the quadratic function is exactly the same. It's just been shifted instead of right or left up in this case. So we can see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This was shifted up 5 units. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That was shifted up 5 units. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. They were all shifted up 5 units. So that plus 5 after the x squared tells us that the function will be shifted up 5 units. So again, you're going to try the x squared minus 3 on your own and write a description as to how it affects the x squared function. Okay, so again, complete all those parts that I didn't do with you. Um, have me check in with you before you move on to the exit tickets.